Hi, my name is Leon. I'm from the Allen Heath factory in the UK where we design um, this wonderful GSR 24. We also, as you know, make all the zone DJ equipment, really good sounding DJ stuff. We do live uh, mixing, analog and digital for many years. Uh, in the past, we had a specialized team working on um, radio, studio mixers and recording mixers. And uh, we had a lot of success in this market and we had a very good reputation for EQ and mixing systems. And recently, uh, we kind of moved into the live market. But studio uh, equipment has become a lot more um, available now to musicians and producers because they use computers. So what we've done is we've looked at the, uh, the problems associated with this uh, and the problems generally are um, when you want to go into studio recording and using a DAW, uh, you have to collect together a lot of expensive equipment like mic pre's on Firewire, um, which are expensive. You also have to um, use a mouse to do most of the operations on screen and you have to control uh, monitoring uh, for the musicians and set up headphone mixes then you have problems with latency and then you have to have um, other devices to control volume so you end up with four or five six different devices each one with different setups each one with different configurations and this gets very complicated so what we said is hey look in the old days we used to use a mixing desk we used to get the center of the studio was a mixing console so we looked back at our old designs we use the same uh, designer has been at Alan Heath now for 15 years, Mike Griffin. Uh, and Mike uh, was responsible for um, the early recording mixes which were very successful such as GS3 and GS3000. And we took some of those features um, like the valve tube preamps which you can see here in the middle section and we took those features and we brought those back into um, the new world of uh, DAW recording. But what we decided to do was put everything in the console. So the concept is uh, we have a 24 channel mixing console which is the center of the studio the operator has everything he needs in one place it's very compact size um, it's 24 mono channels plus two stereo channels and the ch stereo channels have a choice of two inputs so we have a lot of sources available now um, immediate thing you'll notice is we have a long EQ section uh, this is probably the best EQ Alan Heath has um, ever done. Most expensive EQ and pre uh, combination. This is um, fully parametric mids. You can see here um, the EQ will sweep down to 18 hertz. So you can do peaking, dipping EQ, the very low end. So it's like a recording EQ. So this is a really, really nice feature. So you have an LF shelving control, HF shelving, plus two parametric sections here. So this is an inline channel. We also have uh, six auxiliary sends, which is brilliant because if you want to set up headphone mixes, if you're plugging in all your instruments and you need to be able to set up a mix for a musician so they can hear each other, you have uh, pre-fade or post-fade um, sends. And obviously you normally use these pre-fade and you would set up maybe one, two, three, four um, monitor mixes or maybe two stereo mixes, allowing all the musicians to hear what they're doing, um, which is, the important job in the studio is get everybody playing, get everybody listening to each other. If you try and do that in the DAW, you've got the problem of patching in mic pre, sending everything to a DAW, and then setting up monitor mixes from a DAW, so you've already got the latency of the, the recording path to consider. So this way, it's great, it's like direct monitoring. So plug in all your instruments here, you've got um, typical gain, polarity, and high pass filter, in each path. Um, you can set up monitoring, you get people playing, get people working together. You can then in the control room um, check on the, the signal levels and um, set up um, you know, a house mix, a uh, control room mix on the faders. And in fact, you can also use this live. So if you were gonna record a band, what you could do is plug all the band into this desk, set up the monitors, um, either by headphones or by wedges, use these faders to mix the house PA, at the same time capture everything to DAW, pre-fade, uh, capture everything as a recording, and then deal with everything later on in the studio. So it is actually fully working live desk. So that's something that some people have forgotten about when they're in the studio. So this is possible to take this out on the road. 
Um, then the advantage we have in this desk is these buttons here. We have four buttons, A, B, C, D. The, these buttons allow you um, to set how the um, channel strips interface with the DAW. So, for example, uh, when this button uh, is in the up position, the A button, then the uh, channel will be sent to the DAW direct from um, the preamp. So you have preamp and high pass filter and then the EQ will be listened to in the control room and by the engineer so we can play around with that independence of recording. If you press the button in then you will then follow the EQ um, to the send. So that means then you can use the EQ path, it's like inserting um, a really high quality EQ onto your recording feed. Um, the other buttons then allow you to um, decide how the um, DAW interfaces with the insert point. If you um, bring the DAW back in, um, C, it's after the EQ, so basically the DAW path will be returned to the channel fader, allowing you to um, bring back faders for monitoring, setting up a mix. If you press this button here, the B button, then the return from the DAW will uh, be for the insert point and the EQ. So now we have an analog EQ and insert point in the path from the DAW, which is great because it means you can then use previously recorded digital material, um, bring it back into the desk. You have the benefit of a nice analog EQ. You have a nice compressors or valve outboard gear, whatever you want to use. Uh, and that's all in the channel path and then to the fader and then you can return it to the DAW and track it again. Um, there's two versions of this desk. Um, one has um, non-motorized faders and the other one has motor faders. Um, both desks um, still have the opportunity to use MIDI faders. So the, the last button here, D, allows this fader to become a MIDI fader and then what will happen is when you move this fader and you've set it up in your DAW, then this fader will move the fader on screen. So in fact, you can use this as a, a giant MIDI controller for on screen. So another problem is mixing in a DAW, you end up having to use a mouse, clicking on faders, writing automated scripts, trying to do a mix, and you're always thinking about one um, hand. Whereas in the world of traditional recording, you, you know, it's great to get your hands on the controls, fade things in and out, listen to different mixes. Uh, and Trimby, this, uh, what, what this will do is will actually move the faders in the DAW and then you can actually mix on screen using faders. So this is like a giant um, fader bank in MIDI. In addition to that, we have these sections here. Uh, we have a transport section which can be mapped to the DAW so you can start and stop and go to the beginning and go to the end of the, the track and some custom panels here. Some faders, some rotary controls and a jog wheel and some keys. So these can be mapped to the DAW uh, either using a template where you have some templates for you to download or you can literally do MIDI learning um, in the DAW. So if you're bringing up um, a plug-in or you have other um, systems on the DAW. Again, instead of having to have a separate MIDI controller, you've got all your audio here, your monitoring, EQ and everything, and now we have MIDI controls built in, so that's saved buying another MIDI device. Everything's here in the desk, ready to go. <clears throat> in addition to that, the solo keys here will also work with MIDI, so they have different modes. Um, they can be used as pre-fade or post-fade um, solo points for in analog. If you press two keys down together, then we have solo in place. So as you so solo an instrument, you will then hear just that instrument that will switch off all the other instruments and you will hear the instrument exactly has, how it's gonna be in the mix following the fader and pan. Um, it is also possible to set up these as select keys as well to um, work with the DAW for muting and soloing on screen. So basically, if you take the time to um, get to know your DAW and interface it with this console, you have a really good working relationship. Again, really putting your hands back where, in line where the, the audio sources are coming in and out and working with the DAW. So the DAW becomes uh, more invisible. The um, 24 inputs all 
um, sent up Firewire or ADAT if you have the um, digital option card. Plus, um, stereo channels are sent on um, Firewire and ADAT and the four groups. So we have 32 lines um, all together that are going to the um, DAW, which means um, all the subgroups can be done. So you can take some mono <coughs> inputs, for example, some drums, route them all to, um, with these traditional routing buttons here to say groups one and two. So now these eight channels will all mix with pans, level controls to the sub subgroup. Subgroup can have an insert on it, an analog insert if you have one in your rack, and then be sent to the DAW to be recorded and, and worked on again. So it's, you're working with the original concept of direct outs going to tape or using subgroups. And subgroups are great because you can insert um, processing. Uh, if you have nice outboard gear, you can insert the processing on a subgroup and have it. And also it allows you to listen to the subgroup here um, using AFL. We also have two more auxiliary sends here. These are um, post fade five and six. So again, you can nice and easily take a, a signal coming in from an instrument, send it from the channel on uh, number five, there's the master, and this could go into um, a, a reverb device or a delay or other send and return, and can be brought back down the serial channel. So all your patching is nice and easy. It's really getting people back into using the desk as the center of the, of the studio operations. Mentioning uh, outboard, um, yeah, we really like the sound of tube preamps and um, what, what the, the valves can do to sound. So uh, our old desk, the GS3000, has some tube preamps which are patchable. And what we've done is we've included those in the GSR24. So here are two valve strips. They are mono valve strips. Um, on the back of the desk we have XLR input for mics. So you can actually plug a nice vocal microphone straight into the XLR. You have um, phantom power, so you can use a condenser mic, polarity, and then the gain control. If you plug an instrument in here, press this button, you can use the TRS jack, and then you can plug in directly a keyboard, drum machine, you know, synthesizer, etc., guitars, straight in on jacks. So you've got gain control. You can route it then to um, the, the mix, LR, or again to the subgroups, and then send it to the DAW. And this control, this is basically where it all happens. What happens here is this is uh, a wet and dry control, and the more you turn up this, um, this knob, you'll see here the light will go red, and then what will happen is you will get um, a lot more drive and even harmonic distortion from the valve added to the signal pad. So basically you can use this to sweeten up uh, digital material or uh, send from a stereo, you can set up a stereo send, or even press this button here and root inputs from the DAW, for example a subgroup or a mix, back through the valves, set up the drive, level, pan, and then send it back out through the groups to the DAW. So you're basically inserting a valve outboard processing onto your DAW digital stuff. So really, in a nutshell, you've got everything you need to do high quality um, studio um, management. Um, you've got the ability to handle a lot of channels, uh, interface very seamlessly with DAW. You've also got great monitoring section here. We can listen to two-track playback. We can um, change our control room speakers. These buttons here, so you can set up um, small speakers and other reference speakers and flip between the two. We have a talk back as well, so the talk back microphone is included. So once the musicians are set up and um, listening on headphones or in the studio from the control room you can press this button here talk here and then the musicians will hear in the headphones so again making it really easy to communicate because it's all about you know working with people and communicating with them getting a good performance so we think that um, GSR is bringing back those traditional values of, of the engineer interfacing well with musicians interfacing well with the recording and having everything to hand in one place so they can do a, a good recording session. Um, GSR has had a fantastic response on forums. Um, it's, we worked a lot asking people what kind of features they want and everybody's been waiting for this kind of approach.
approach to come back on the market. The designer, Mike, uh, he's worked for uh, a lot of um, high quality audio manufacturers in the past. I mean, he's worked with um, Focus Wright and Rupert Neve. Um, so, and then he worked for Soundcraft uh, on the Ghost, and then he's been at Alan Heath for 15 years. So, this guy has really got some good ears. And basically, I can tell you that you know <coughs> you're going to hear some really high quality and nice audio control in this mixing desk. <coughs> 